Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, I welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining with us for this time of worship on this third Sunday of Advent where we're celebrating joy. And uh, we want to extend a special welcome to anybody who may be joining us for the first time. We're so excited that you're with us. We hope that you will fill out our contact form. The link to that is right in the comment section and there's a special QR code on the screen for you as well. Really, if it's your first time, fill that out so that we can connect with you, uh, come up alongside you in your life of faith, um, and get to know you better and get you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about so many ways to engage with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and service and fun and connection, all of those things. And we hope everyone will fill out that contact form. And remember that there is a place for prayer requests on that that goes straight to our pastors and prayer team. So everybody use that contact form today. Now, when we come together for online worship, we covenant together to participate and be a blessing. This isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is worship of God with one another. So we covenant to participate, and that means that we're going to participate. Go ahead and sing the songs. Go ahead and pray when it's time to pray. Uh, communicate. Use the comment section and fully participate in our time of worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that all the ways that we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with people as we're engaging in this worship today, the way we're sending this out into the world. We want it all to be a blessing, one to, a blessing to everyone involved. So please join us in that covenant to blessing. We are so honored to welcome the Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup as our guest preacher today. Of course, Margaret Ann is not really a guest. She makes her home here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. She is the executive director of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and the pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the social enterprise that makes it home here at Douglas Avenue United United Methodist Church. So we're just so excited that she's bringing our message today. And then today is the third Sunday in the season of Advent, which is a time when Christians deepen their spiritual practices such as prayer and silence, giving and fasting in preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ, as well as the celebrations of Christmas. Each week during this season, we will light a candle in our Advent wreath to help us pray and to remember. And you are welcome to join with us in this practice as well using your own Advent wreath candle or any candle that you might have. So I invite you to get that ready. Get your Advent candle ready, your lighter, so that you can join with us in this special time in just a few minutes. Welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Joy to the World, Unspeakable Joy. <laughs>
I'm Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years, and I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. My name is Jeff Peterson. I've been attending DAUMC online with Steve and all of you since the beginning of the pandemic. We invite you to have your Advent wreath ready today, or have a candle with you and a lighter so that you may join us in lighting the candle of joy for Advent. As our nights grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs in our wreath, the light of the candles and the green of the evergreen boughs to help us remember God's promise to our world. The first week, we lit the candle of hope as we hold hope in the promise of a coming Messiah. Last week, we lit the candle of peace as we await our Prince of Peace to return to, his, to this world and make all things right. The prophet Zephaniah said, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, for the Lord your God, your Savior, is living among us. Today we light the candle of joy in a year where so much of life has been difficult. Joy might seem hard to find, but joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us. Joy is a choice, an attitude, so today, we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our, ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us, that you created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Please join us in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Please join us in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say peace be with you and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with us, and with these folks in our church community. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Madeline Woodruff, a longtime member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, a member of the Zephyr class, and I'm filling in today, answering the phone in the church office. I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday and peace be with you. Hi, I'm Justine Dion, co-chair of the Cookie Walk. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Holly Clunch. I'm one of the co-chairs of this year's Cookie Walk. Peace be with you. You know what time it is. It is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to come in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. This wonderful time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her fabulous assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now for small talk. Hello everybody, it is Miss Lori and Laud the Duck. Laud, what are you doing? Could you explain this please? No, no they're... He's put his costume on for a Christmas pageant. Like, you know, the nativity, you know, Mary and Jesus, and you know, there's, there's, there's donkeys, there's cows, there's camels, there's sheep, which you are a sheep. I don't recall anything with a duck. Do you? Huh. So what do you think, Lon? You still gonna go with the duck? Yeah, he's going with the duck. Okay, well, I guess when you think about it, Hmm. Guess there could have been ducks. And chickens. I guess it doesn't have to just be donkeys and sheep and camels. But one thing that we know there was. Jesus, right? So in your nativity at home, it's okay to have a duck or a chicken or a mouse, whatever you would like in your nativity. Mm-hmm, yeah. Thank you, Laud, for your creativity and reminding us that anything can be in your nativity as long as you've got Jesus. Because he's the main part of our nativities, of our Christmas pageants, of all things Christmas. So you have to remember, to keep Jesus in Christmas. Feel free to add a duck. Bye guys. Please join us in singing, Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Good morning. My name is Jill Gordon, and this is my father, D.R. Gordon. Our reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, 
when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as is it written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowd that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from those wrath to come? There are fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able for these stones to rise up children of Abraham. Even now, the axe is trying to, at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit, is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. Whoever has food must be like one. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Good morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I'm the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? And I am um, a dear friend of Douglas Avenue, and Wouldn't It Be Lovely is housed here at Douglas Avenue. And this is my home church. But mostly, it is an honor this morning to bring to you the Word of God. Last week, I was on vacation, and I went to Chicago with my daughter, Abby, and we loved walking around downtown Chicago, seeing all the lovely Christmas lights, the window displays, the hotel lobbies, and all of the Christmas hype. It was a great time. We were getting ready. I also love to drive through subdivisions at this time of year and see all the lights on the trees and bushes and look in people's windows and see their trees. It seems like that almost everybody is getting ready. Our houses and our yards are starting to get covered with all of the decor and the lights of the season. If you've been to the west side of Springfield, you know that traffic is heavier, that restaurants are busier. Christmas parties are underway though many are modified due to the pandemic, but a lot is going on. The cookie walk yesterday um, is a sure reminder that Christmas is coming. We are getting ready. I've seen some of your beautiful holiday decorations on Facebook. Nancy and Cindy's are at the top of my list for beautiful settings. I finished decorating my home on Christmas, on Thanksgiving evening. We are getting ready. I'm not sure about all of you, but I receive so much joy around the Christmas time, sitting in front of my Christmas tree with all of those twinkle lights. I sit there for quiet, I sit there and I feel closer to God. When I come into the church some mornings, I can see down the hall and I see the mission tree still lit up, and it's such a peaceful and comforting feeling, at least for me. We are getting ready. But, and here's the but, how would it feel if we were getting ready and sitting and enjoying these twinkle lights and all of our decorated spaces, and then we hear a knock at the door or the doorbell, except it's the back door. Who on earth would be knocking on the back door during this time of year? Don't they know that all of the pretty stuff and special stuff that we want people to see is at the front of our house? Our nativity scenes, our Christmas tree, all of that, our family photos, our nativity sets, the lights and the tinsel are on display in the front of the house, not the back of the house, at least for most of us. 
But not knowing what to do, let's pretend here for a minute and we answer that back door. And there he is. He came straight from the wilderness, the desert to be exact. Some say he smelled like locust and honey and his clothes were made of camel's hair. There he is, right in the middle of our Advent, week three. He doesn't wait for us to invite him in as we're getting ready for Christmas. John the Baptist just walks into this time, not just into our homes and into our lives, but I hope after this sermon into our hearts as well. When inside, let's just pretend a little bit, he walks around our house not seeing all of those pretty things that we hope that he will see. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem impressed with our decorations. Not even our beautiful Christmas tree catches his eye. He doesn't even mention my new handmade wall art that wouldn't it be lovely made or those beautiful hand-painted pillows. Instead, he walks into the middle of our family rooms, in the middle of all of our preparations of getting ready, and he stands up straight and he says, repent, repent. In Luke 3, it says he went in all the regions around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In verse 8, it says we are to produce fruit worthy of repentance. Verse 11, it says we are baptized with water for repentance. In the Gospel of Matthew, John the Baptist is even more clear. There in verse 2, it says, repent for the kingdom of God has come near. Hmm. Okay, God, you know that we're all getting ready to celebrate and to be merry, and repenting is the farthest thing for most of our minds. At least I know it was for me. But likewise, I would imagine that those that live long ago around the Jordan, especially those political and religious leaders, felt that way too. I suppose they were scared because hordes of people were coming around John the Baptist to be cleansed by water, and something big was happening at that time of year. Those powerful leaders must have looked at this man and asked the same thing. Who invited you here, and why now? Things are going our way. There's no time for this. But we're all getting ready, right? But the truth is, we can decorate our churches, and this sanctuary is so beautiful. We can decorate our yards. I love those big um, blow-up inflatables, and our house is all we want. We can sing praises of peace and goodwill, and we can celebrate the many areas that we assist in making peace, and especially Douglas Avenue, we do so much for others. But John the Baptist comes for a different reason. The reason is to remind us of the other times of the places that we maybe are trying to hide, to help us reflect on those things that we don't want others to see, those areas in our lives that maybe we're trying to cover up with twinkle lights and tinsel. Last week, Pastor Meredith preached on Elizabeth and Zachariah. We were reminded that they were this very old couple beyond celebrate childbearing years, but God saw to it that they would have a child a miracle, no less. We are told that when pregnant Mary came to visit cousin Elizabeth, when they were both expecting, Mary expecting Jesus, but Elizabeth expecting John the Baptist, we're told that the unborn John the Baptist leaped inside of Elizabeth's um, stomach. We know that John the Baptist had this huge following as he walked around baptizing people and getting them ready. All of this to say is John the Baptist is super important to the story of Jesus. He was the one selected to get us ready. So we should be listening very closely to what John the Baptist has to say. He's important to our story. He's telling us even today to get ready. And what that means is to repent. For most of us, we'd rather prepare for Christmas by doing good deeds and hearing the story of sweet baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, which is certainly good and fine. But the prophet John the Baptist doesn't do Christmas that way. He brings a different kind of getting ready. He tells us the importance of the holy work of repentance. 
And yes, he comes at a time when self-analysis often is the farthest thing from our, our mind. I know that's true for me. I'm not here standing in judgment. I'm here standing with you. I think that part of our discomfort with John the Baptist is that deep down, most of us know that he is right. When we look around and see the needs of the world, when we spent time this week and last week processing the rising COVID rates, school shootings or stabbings, the opiate crisis, problems on the border with humanity, decrease church attendance nationwide. As we reflect on our lives and our world or think about the different personal relationships or communications that you have had, we know that things aren't what they should be and certainly not what they could be. And John the Baptist knows this too. He knew that over 2,000 years ago, how the Roman Empire was treating people was wrong. He knew how people were treating each other, how they were living, and that is not God's plan. So his job was to prepare the way, and he said to do that, we must repent. When we think about repenting, or even saying it differently, when we think about sin, we often think of things such as drinking too much or drugs or stealing or being unfaithful or lying. But probably most of you can sit comfortably, take a deep breath, as those actions are probably not part of your life. And I bet you're saying, shoo, this sermon's for somebody else. But today I believe we're called to look deeper, to think deeper. Sin in a broader sense is anything that separates you from the heart of God. Anything that causes us to move away from God's heart, being less than we were created by the image of God, to love all people no matter what. It is the unwillful turning away from God as the center of your life, that all of your life centers around God and love and making not ourselves the center. I don't know your sins, well, maybe some of them, nor do you know mine, and maybe a few of them. But all of that does not matter. What we know in our hearts, we know the times that we're greedy or dishonest or prideful, apathetic, too impaired, or whatever. I don't want to start naming all of the things that moves us from the heart of God. But everybody here knows something where you could improve, that you need to turn around and do better. So for today, I think it's helpful to ask, what if John the Baptist came into your back door this season and he looked around? What if he looked at your text messages, your computer, your calendar, how you spend your time, your bank accounts, your receipts, and even rooted through your closets? Would he find things that are not drawing you closer to the love and heart of God? And just in case we need a review of God's heart, Jesus told us we are to love, to love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind, and to love our neighbors just as we love ourselves. And since the people around the Jordan um, River had not met Jesus yet, John the Baptist gave them clues. In Luke 3, 10, John tells them exactly what this means. If you have two coats, you give one away. If you collect money, be fair. If you have power, be nice. Where in your life do you fall short? Maybe in your spiritual life, are you spending enough time um, sitting with God, trying to align your heart with the heart of God? with your thoughts, your deeds, your actions, your lack of actions. I reread a part of a book this week by my favorite pastoral theologian, and I know I quote her often, Dr. Barbara Brown Taylor, called The Lost Language of Salvation. She said something that initially caught me off guard when I read it several years ago. She writes that sin is our only hope. What on earth would she mean? But she explains it so clearly. It's not committing sin that's our hope, but naming our sin. She continues to explain that we rarely use the word sin anymore. We don't speak of it much in church because we come to church to feel better, to find hope, not to be reminded of where we fall short. 
But when we don't name it, we're not compelled to change it. And that change is called repentance. Repent comes from the ancient word that means to turn around. For John, this meant not just changing our thinking, but changing our seeing, how we look and see the world, but mostly changing our doing. Naming our sin to God holds us accountable to doing. It gives us the footing so we can turn around and do something different from all of those things that are separating us from God. Repentance means to change or turn away from our sin. We often confuse repentance with remorse or feeling sorry. Feeling remorse or being sorry is an appropriate response when we're wrong, but that doesn't change us. Repentance, and when we choose that, we're changed. And in life, I know that we often have to turn around and around and around and around again and again. We don't get it right, but if we don't keep trying every day and using this Advent season to make your life better. C.S. Lewis, a great theologian, stated this, repentance is not something that God demands of you before God will take you back. That's not it at all. It's simply a description of what going back looks like. I love the statement, we cannot be right with God without repentance. It's like asking God to take us back without actually going. Each year, I start Advent with the thought, I want this Christmas to be different. I want it to be holy, not just a holiday. And I'm convinced that everyone here wants the same thing. Our scriptures tell us that we need to participate in the holy work of repentance. Please, please give it some thought this week and next week as we prepare for Christmas morning. What areas in your life are pulling at you, are pulling you away from the heart of God? What thinking is different that you need to change? In closing, this scripture tells us that we need people just like John the Baptist who will come into our back doors, search around our homes, and find our secrets and our hidden places and reveal them to us. We need people like John the Baptist to see us who we really are, to name it, and then challenge us to do better. We need him to remind us to turn towards God and help change us. And in doing that, we truly are getting ready the way the scriptures intended us to do. Mostly, we need John the Baptist to enter our back doors to remind us of a different kind of gift, a gift of repentance. I'm convinced that if we accept it and if we unwrap it, it might be our favorite gift of all. Amen. May God be the glory. Please join us in singing, All Earth is Waiting.
we're going to spend some time together in prayer now, and I want to remind you to use your contact form today if you have prayer requests that you would like for us to be praying for with you here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Those prayer requests go straight to our pastors and prayer team, and we will hold them in prayer. You're also encouraged to use the comment section today if you'd like to put prayer requests there as well. And there will be some opportunities for you to just lift aloud your prayers uh, wherever you are in the silence of your hearts or aloud. So please join with me in this time of prayer. Merciful God, we hear the voice of John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness. In our hearts, we feel the call to prepare the way of the Lord. Help us to do that through our prayers and thanksgivings this day. God of our salvation, receive our prayers. Holy God, as the days grow short and the nights grow long, we thank you for these reminders that there is time for work and time for rest. For those that know warm homes and soft places to sleep and rest, we thank you for these precious gifts. We pray for those who are experiencing homelessness or those whose home is unsafe or financially insecure. May all your children get the rest they need to thrive and help us to make that a reality for all of your children. God of our salvation, receive our prayers. God of peace, as divisiveness and conflict continue to plague us, we thank you for the generosity, kindness, and care that this season encourages within us. We lift up all people everywhere, living in the midst of violence, war, and the aftermath of environmental degradation. We lift to you all who are sick, all who need your healing, all who are feeling disconnected, all struggling with addiction. As we contemplate the vulnerability of Christ, born a fragile infant in a violent world, let us drop our facades and the masks of strength that we hide behind. May this season of Advent prepare us to celebrate the strength that can be found in weakness and the power held in humility and love. God of our salvation, receive our prayers. God of joy, as your people gather in homes and churches to celebrate, help us remember all the reasons we have to rejoice in you. And we offer these to you now in these moments of silence and in the comments. Help us remember your protective presence, your gentleness and love, your peace which passes all understanding, and most especially your gift to us of Jesus Christ. God of our salvation, receive our prayers. We love you and believe you, merciful God, and so we lift all these prayers to you in full trust that you hear and receive us. We join our voices together now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Please pray and join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. They say there's no place like home for the holidays, and we certainly hope that's the way you feel about Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. As we approach the end of the year, we have an important opportunity to help preserve our church home. Let's hear a little bit more about it from Finance Committee Chairman Curtis Dion. Over the course of the past two years, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church leaders have completed significant projects to keep our beautiful facility fully operational for all the ministries we do and support. This effort began two years ago with the installation of a new roof over the Great Hall and church office and has continued this year with the replacement of two air conditioning units and this month's construction of a new roof on the education building. Some of the money for these repairs came from savings. For the remainder, our church leaders worked with our strong partners at United Community Bank. Our unsecured roofing loan has been paid on time 
and was recently refinanced to obtain a new lower rate. As 2021 comes to a close, we hope that you consider making a special fully tax deductible gift to support this necessary facilities work and pay down the roofing loan. You can help DAUMC raise the roof and start 2022 on a strong financial footing as we continue to provide life-changing ministry through our facilities, in our community, and beyond. Donations can be made by check with the words raise the roof or roof loan in the memo line or by using the drop-down menu on the church giving portal selecting raise the roof. The end of the year is a great time to consider tax-deductible gifts of all kinds. For tax advantage gifts of stocks, mutual funds, IRA minimum distributions, and other appreciated assets, please contact the church office for assistance or speak to your tax professional. Thank you for your investments in our growing ministries as together we raise hope, raise love, raise justice, raise joy, and raise the roof. Thank you. There's certainly a lot going on this holiday season at Douglas Avenue. Next Sunday, December 19th, we will enjoy beautiful music by our Chancel Choir, our Wesley Ringers, and the DAUMC Praise Band. You'll be able to hear this music at the 1030 Worship in the Sanctuary and the online service. We know that the holiday season is not always the most joyful time of year for those facing grief and loss. Join us on Tuesday, December 21st at 7 p.m. for the Longest Night Worship Service, a service of remembrance, consolation, and assurance. This service will be available in the sanctuary and online on Facebook and YouTube. Then on Friday, December 24th, we'll be observing Christmas Eve. Join us at 4 p.m. for a family-friendly worship service in the sanctuary, at 6 p.m. for online worship, and at 8 p.m. for a service of lessons and carols in the sanctuary. If you're coming to the 8 p.m. service, please arrive up to a half an hour early. We'll be featuring beautiful music of the season from the DAUMC musicians. The DAUMC Missions Committee has announced that this year's Christmas missions offering will benefit Helping Hands of Springfield and the Chaddock Children's Home in Quincy. Both of these wonderful organizations are very familiar to our congregation, and we know that you'll want to give generously. We hope that you'll also want to bring in hats and gloves and mittens and scarves for the students at Du Bois Elementary School and place them on the Christmas tree in the welcoming area outside the church narthex. Let's help make this a warm winter for our neighbors at Du Bois. And don't forget to pick up your calendars and prints featuring the wonderful artwork of DAUMC's own Gwen Lewis. This is the 10th anniversary, and all of the profits benefit the United Methodist Women's Missions. They make great Christmas gifts. See the display outside the sanctuary near the elevator. If you would like to contribute to a Christmas thank you bonus for the DAUMC staff, Please remember that your checks must be into the church office by Friday, December 17th. Our staff works hard throughout the year. This is a great opportunity for us to say thank you. If you would like to order one or more poinsettia plants to grace our DAUMC sanctuary during the Christmas holidays, your orders must be in to the church office no later than tomorrow. This is a wonderful opportunity to offer a plant in honor or in memory of a loved one. Thank you for your dedicated support of the ministries and programs of DAUMC. We always try to make it easy to give, and if you ever need help setting up a giving plan, please don't hesitate to call the church office. We will be happy to be of assistance. Thank you for your kind attention. We know this was a lot of information to cover, but there's a lot going on at DAUMC you can be proud of your role in supporting a congregation that is doing so much in our community. Please join us in singing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
Thank you for joining with us in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is such an honor to have this time with you, and we pray that this whole experience for you has been meaningful and uplifting and empowering, that you will join with us again for online worship, or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30 a.m. at the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church facility. We love to worship with you. We love to be connected with you. We love to pray with you. So I just again encourage you to use that contact form so that we can be in touch with you and remember that there's a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and our prayer team. And now as you go into your day, go knowing how much God loves you, you, how much Jesus Christ is coming to be here in our world again, to love us and lead us and save us all and that the Holy Spirit is empowering us to live that life that Christ is calling us to each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>